doing your rodeo this weekend and this what I want to do is uh, put up a good ride you know like for all the family around here and I know there's gonna be some good good riders to beat and but I'm just gonna do my best and put on the show for the family and friends and hope to come somewhere in the rodeo yeah I want to be good good rider I want Aboriginals to look after me I come home each August to my hometown of Dumaji, which is situated in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's right up on the Northern Territory Queensland border. I love coming home because it's such an exciting time of the year for the, the local Dumaji rodeo. Dumaji is the home of the Wanyi, Garawa and Gangalita tribes. There's three tribes here and basically all of my family. And um, I love coming home to be around them and be amongst them. Family and just enjoy, enjoy the rodeo and enjoy the atmosphere of um, catching up with other friends and family as well. From the years gone by, the, the, the pastoral industry was built on the indigenous stockmen. And when I was a kid, I suppose, I grew up with indigenous uh, stockmen, old fellows that, that, that reared us as well. And, and uh, you know, we taught us to ride and, and um, you know, and the stations were full of them. Yeah, the rest of our family, all of us in our family, we, we've been working in stations and all of our grandmothers, grandfathers, they've been growing up in stations and the sort of is running our blood now, yeah. I think the indigenous guys, you know, they got, uh, they got plenty of ticker and they got, you know, an unbelievable amount of balance and, and natural skill, you know, they can do things the rest of us can't. And they just seem to have an affinity with the stock. It's just got this funny sixth sense with that that you don't see in, in a lot of whitefellas. You know, they, they love working with, uh, you know, cattle and horse and that. But sometimes you can't get them away from them sort of thing, you know. And now it's rodeo, man. They want to get more into rodeos than that now. You know, so much rare talent out there. These fellas, you know, especially the indigenous boys, you know, have, have a lot of natural balance and, and um, that type of thing. And so, you know, uh, there's, there's lots of blokes, if, if they got, you know, a number of different qualities could go on you know, and be, and be something and, and go somewhere with it. Adrian will tell him he'll be back. Come on, Troy come Dunn, on, Troy bear down. down. Come on, Troy. It'll be very good for him to come and actually see a bush rodeo. You know, where Doomadji never ever been on TV, television and this is the only annual event Doomadji have every year. And having a superstar coming into Doomadji is what more, you know, can we ask for? Troy Dunn was my hero. He's like my idol grab a hold of that elbow and it moves all of a sudden you've got no hold. I wanted to come with bull rider to be the one of like four down or something. Yeah, like... <laughs> you ab Aboriginal kids out there at Dormanji, you know, you definitely got it in you. And um, you know, when I started, I didn't have more ability than the next bloke. And um, it just uh, comes with a lot of hard work and discipline. <laughs> The rodeo here is one of the largest indigenous run rodeos in the country and it is completely run by the local mob. A lot of the life at Dimmerji was very difficult and very, very, uh, you know, it was tough going. It, it was a subsistence sort of existence. Stock work was part of Dimmerji here right from the beginning. It was a survival issue to start with. People needed, needed to, to produce food locally. With so many of the, the uh, blokes here at Doomadgee, back in the 1950s, 60s, and into the 70s, uh, Doomadgee had a reputation for the, for, the, for the blokes from here as being uh, top-class stockmen. But there was always time for fun and sport and competition. That was part of this community. And um, rodeo, I think, sort of was a natural flow-on from, from that, sort of, that sort of background. The rodeo at Doomadgee, I suppose, grew out of the fact that part of the Part of this, the 
cycle with stock workers. Horses had to be break, broken in. Um, part of breaking in a horse was to get on it for the first time and there was always a mob of blokes standing, sitting around the yard and a mob of kids sitting around the, the top rail of the yard when they'd first get on it in the round yard and then take them out in the big yard and then take them out for a gallop. The earliest rodeo I can remember was probably back in about 74. They, um, and in those days they'd have any chance you'd, you'd, you'd put on a rodeo, they'd have two or three a year. I mean, I remember my first rodeo that I went along to was watching Dad as a pickup man, you know, sitting on Mum's hip, she used to carry me around the yards, I was a little fella, watching Dad ride these horses and always wanting to be like him or emulate what he's, he was doing. Yeah, well, the rodeo kind of died out in the early 1990s, but then it came back again, it's made a big comeback. It was 2007 when they first had another one up home, and, and I think it's brought so much life back into the community. You've got people from Mornington Island coming across on boats, you get people coming in from Normanton, Kawanyama, Tennant Creek to come along and be a part of the Doomadgee Rodeo. You've even got top riders coming down from the Mount Isa Rodeo and the Cloncurry Mary Muster that come along and enjoy the friendly atmosphere of you know, the Doomadgee community and, and be a part of the rodeo there. It's been an absolute blast to come back here and see these guys getting into it, picking up the ball and running with it. It's, it's, yeah. it's a real inspiration. Right here this weekend, everybody's enjoying himself. Um, it's a lot, a lot of work, a lot of people involved with this stuff, a lot of money's been involved with it. But you can see here that the families are happy and, you know, everybody's enjoying themselves. You know, there's a rodeo committee um, and they do all the organising, get it up, get it running, look for the sponsorship and it's totally run by the local mob here and that's really great. Now, there are a couple of main events at all rodeos. There's a bronco riding and of course the big event, the bull riding. It all takes place over three days. Now the rules, even though bull riding and bronco riding are totally different and have different techniques, the rules are pretty similar. Number one, the rider must be on the back of the animal. Number two, the rider must hold on with one hand and have the other hand raised in the air. And at no time is he to touch the animal with the free hand. Number three, hold on for dear life for eight seconds. Now, although eight seconds may seem short, to the rider, it's an eternity. Even though a lot of riders that attend rodeos ride both bronco rides and also bull rides, Everyone knows the bull ride is the big event and it's the one to win. It's always the last event of every rodeo and it always has a huge prize money. You feel everything changes, you know, you don't, your mind's on one thing and everything just becomes between you and the bull. Push the bull over, he slides up to where he wants to be on the suicide block. He's got a seat. When you don't want to just feel comfortable, right? I like to see him get really professional about uh, following the rodeo and be a bull rider, you know. Back him, back him. <laughs> who went on to compete in the International Rodeo and Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne against the world. Let's have a look at it now. She gets out and goes to work. When I used to get thrown all the time, old fellow used to pick me up, no matter if I was crying, bleeding, whatever, he'd throw me back on the horse again. He said, that's the only way you'll learn. My dream is radio, eh? I want to make it to the PBI, that's my biggest goal, eh? Just make it there and, yeah. For well, my boys, yeah, that's all that rodeo sort of throughout Australia sort of there. Yeah, I like to see my boys yeah, get to the national final and, yeah. Back in. I like traveling to rodeos and do a bit of bull riding and um, like working at the station. Get him right. Oh, attack now, attack him! Yeah, I reckon it should be a good weekend. Looking forward to it. 
just hope everyone have a, have a good ride or bull riders and bronc riders. John Jr.'s 2010 final ride was amazing. He had one ride to win it. He was the last competitor and he came out and he nailed it. Eight seconds of pure adrenaline. And I'll tell you what, it was the most amazing ride I've ever seen. Bull riding yeah, here at Dumaji. Yes, feel real proud of myself again. And I yeah, feel proud of my dad and that, you know, he taught me. Before you get on, yeah, you have to stretch out, get a stretch and stretch all my muscle and my arm, yeah. And um, this takes all the, like, nerves, like, nerves off. Well, well, buddy, yeah, every, every rider has, has their own crew, sort of, there, you know, like, to, to, to make sure everything's sort of right, sort of, there, and make sure their ropes are right, and, yeah. As I've already stated, the second division bull riding winner from this year at the mighty Mount Isa Rodeo. He's a talented kid in his own right, comes from a rodeo background. Getting ready, you know, you sort of feel a bit psyched up. That general rush. An adrenaline rush. Yeah, and it feels, you know, a bit nervous, sort of. But you get pretty used to it when you... Yeah, you get to sort of squat and... Just kind of think that you're going to ride him and... Just get out there and... It's a bit rough when you're starting off, you know? But then you get used to it, it's sort of like, you know what's gonna happen and you're looking forward to it and, yeah. So you're gonna try and stay on for the eight seconds, you know? And, yeah, and to make that eight seconds. Oh, when you jump on, just get in, sit on your ropes, sit square, and just enjoy ride coming out. Oh, if mum and dad asked me not to do it, I'd probably still do it. But yeah, yeah, I just like it. It's fun. You know, you don't know which way it's gonna go. You know, you're gonna be, you gotta be ready for it, especially with the jump, kick, and all that power. You know, it's fun. Like the adrenaline rush is just psyched you up, and you know, like the feeling of knowing of you getting on the bull and it's just gonna come out and blow or spin, and the bull is. It's pretty dangerous, you know, being on one of them, so they got horns and they're not going to be frightened. They turn around and hit you. It's pretty dangerous. Uh, well, when you're on the back of a bull, you know, your mind is just blank and it's just, you're so concentrated on what you're doing, you know, it's you and the bull is, and that, you know, if you can make one mistake, but being in the zone is so, like, just gives you a real adrenaline rush and it makes you... Uh, like you want to compete against the bull to see which one's the best, the bull or you, and it just makes you go putting it on your best in it. And it just, well, if you do a good up, put up a good ride, then you you feel so happy about it, and you know that you're walking away the better man. Nah, no, this I reckon this, this one here be pretty good. He looks like a good bucking bull. Got a bit of beef on him. Looks pretty big. Sort of mean. Yeah, I reckon it'd be a good bull to ride. For this weekend, we hope on this uh, will be the biggest one, uh, the biggest rodeo we ever had. So um, we're looking forward for the, the crowd mostly. Rodeo is getting bigger and better every year, and there's more crowd, and especially with the prize money. Actually, Dumbuji is coming on the map when we had um, government bodies coming in. But also getting to catch up with families too that you haven't seen for a while in the community, and sort of uh, boost boost Dumbuji as a as a community rather than um, the negative things that are always coming out of the you know? Immerse my underlying message One for all of her and one for him Open up, let's play our part in this are yours to use them as you wish don't you love her when the rain then we've got dummy day on the friday which is the start of the rodeo they love excitement in regards to any particular thing we have here uh, that involves families families are very important to dummy people here that's what dummy people do around rodeos around any of the holidays we come together as a community, we share and care in regards to looking after each other. You know? It's quite a unique place up here. You know, we keep our culture very strong, our, 
our, our laws and our customs here and really do respect each other. Um, basically what we're doing is we're paying, we get to pay that up for a fun dance to have, uh, you know, celebrate and enjoy our culture and customs and these markings are mainly just for, um, for when we're having fun. It's just a central place for everyone to come together and we've got kids, um, kids activities at the Radio 2 eh? The potty rides, last year they had the little Shetland pony uh, barebacks. I uh, hope that's going to take place again this year, which is quite fair. The kids loved it. I mean, everything here is really, you know, like for the kids. You know, those kids really appreciate it. They look forward to every year to, you know, to this event. And, um, you know, they've all got their dreams and aspirations that they're going to be, you know, maybe ride a bronc or a bull or something sometimes. So. It's a credit to Doomadgee themselves. And the kids were just unbelievably great. You know, we had fun with them all week and a lot of adults. And it was, yeah, it was really privileged. The amount of heart and try they put into it, that's probably where they really shine, you know. They, they really put a lot of heart into it and hang on for everything they're worth and not frightened about getting hurt. Pretty hard sort of day, you know, like, yeah, well, you know, like from my side sort of day, like I used to compete in rodeo sort of there. You know, like I tried to try and encourage them to do something else, but you know, like, bloody, you know, from the from father's side sort of there, we just want to follow your footsteps and what, you, what you've done in your, in, your, in your life. And yeah, we want to be the same and we want to be a good cowboy. When we were small, you see a lot of our uncles growing up, you know, doing the rodeo. And thought, oh, we want to be like them, you know. So I watch a lot of rodeo, rodeo videos, and I just think to my head, you know, like, oh, that's, I might try it when I get older. Yeah, my dad put me on the horse. I love riding horses. Oh, we learn heaps, like bull catching and rodeo, rodeo and all that. And my dad, yeah, just put me on the little potty calves, and I love that. But then you start getting older and you don't want to play soccer no more. And you start riding horses and jumping on the bull catchers, chasing bulls, and you're big enough to work. So one day I, I said to my dad, and yeah, dad, I'm, one day I'm going to be a rodeo rider and I'm, and I'm going to chase that rodeo. I'm really pretty hard on my boys sort of there, you know, like, and bloody just take him out, get him, you know, like, always get him on the work sort of there, then. When, when it comes to the rodeo, they, they got, you know, like, they, they get on bulls before they, you know, go to the rodeo. He turned us into a really good man, you know. Instead of hanging around in town, borrow a little, doing nothing, like every other one. Yeah, T taught us a lot, you know, how to get out and look at the future, look what's out there for you. This is uh, my uncle Shane, he, Shane O'Keefe, he lives with my auntie and they've been looking after me for a while and I've stayed at their place with them for a pretty long time and they're like my mum and dad, so yeah I've got a lot of respect for them. They give me everything I want and need, and they sort of spoil me sometimes. He was a little quiet little boy, happy, always out going, you know, enjoying himself, love hunting and that. And we'll be supporting you and that. Your father will be supporting you. He'll have support on both sides, you know. I started about when I was about turning 16, 16. I moved out to Borrell with my dad in the Northern Territory and he he tried started training me on bulls and yeah and he took me to a rodeo and I had my first bull ride and did I've been doing it ever since and it's pretty good yeah. I feel good about it. I get nervous when he ride. 
if he went in behind in the chute and when he's ready to climb on, he'll start panicking. Make me think that he's gonna get hurt. Uh, yeah, well, it's, well, it'd be pretty hard too, like, you know, family worrying about you and then you thinking, you know, but them supporting you, you know, if they're gonna be supporting you on your dreams, so that'd be good, you know, as long as you got family support and makes you want to do it more. To support Jamal, well, myself and my husband would have to save up to get those things for him and get things going for him. And knowing that, you know, if you've got problems, you can always go out and see your family. So, yeah, it's pretty good that i got mum and dad to support me on being what I want to be. Righto, everyone down to shoot one. Tony Fraser. She's on that stair and she's ready to roll. Here we go, Dumaji. I've actually just ridden it only in Dumaji. Um, actually, this is my fourth go. Fourth time lucky, I think. <laughs> Out she comes! Out she goes, Tony! Oh, 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 I'm just actually glad to see as many women um, jump up and do it. Come on, Daisy! Hey, hey, oh, Daisy! Oh, wow! Put your hands together, Dominic! Come on! Hey, guys, just jump off! I just done it because I thought it was fun. Mm. The little girl comes out, have a look at it go! Oh, she's got the arm up, she's ridden the longest out of anyone! Go, Naomi! Look at the arm up! Hey, put your hands together for this girl! Come on, Dominic! Oh, we grew up on a, on a station where my early childhood was on Spring Creek Station with family there. We used to do a lot of mastering and stuff. I started riding horses when I was four years old in the stock camp. I think I, I grew up on a horseback. I never was in the camp with my mum. I was always out riding horses with my dad. He, you know, he taught me to be who I am today. I've got three brothers, no sisters. Only, I'm the only girl in the family. Henry and Anthony, they're younger than me. We went down the yards, jumped on a couple of horses. We went down, we went, went to go through Wanamula area there and got all the horse shied away from the plastic bag on the ground, lift up in the air, threw me straight on my stomach, knocked me out of wind. <laughs> that was the last I stole a horse from the yard anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Did your dad get upset by you stealing a horse? No, he, he laughed at me and he said, good on you. I mean, you've been talking this weekend. They say you've been a bit no good, feeling a bit sad, and I could, I could tell that in you because you're your old fellow, a bit crook, old grandfather. Yeah, yeah, because he's, you know, he's 89. A bit old. My mother's father, when he was alive, my grandfather. Hmm. You know, we all won a few little events in Bolula when we were kids. Oh, not ki when we were, you know, teenagers now, and he, he said, you got a little bronc rider there, my youngest brother, Anthony and Henry's a bull rider. He said, but you always watch that Dorney there, you watch. She's gonna come up one day against them boys and she's gonna beat them. I'm in the novice bronc rod today. Yeah, competing against the boys. Well, Henry's more of a bull rider, but he's his second year in the bronc. It's good too. I'm behind him 100%. Do you think you can beat him? I don't know. My old grandfather reckoned I could beat him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll um, dedicate this ride to my old grandfather. My life growing up, I had a strict, you know, strict parents and stuff. And then, as I hit my teens, I started to get a bit crazy there, drinking alcohol and stuff. And then, then I got got together with these old girls, and they explained a lot of things to me too. So, yeah, it sort of put me on my on my feet again now. If I got really got something good going for me, and you know, I, I really want to do it, and you know, like if I probably get 
addicted or getting addicted to ganja or grog, it's probably going to slow me down. And then I know I've got pretty good talent, but if I hang out with the wrong people and, you know, they're just going to make me do stuff and it's, it's just not going to get me nowhere in life. And then it's, all that talent is just going to go to waste. Yeah, well, I think I got the right attitude to be a, like, cowboy because, you know, like, if you're going to do something and you got family there to support you and put you on the right track, you know, if you're doing something wrong, or they can tell you right from wrong and what's, what's good from bad. Here we go, the serpent. Oh, here we go, he's on the decent one. Oh, there, hang on there. Good boy, Tony. Good boy, Tony. Yeah, no, I'm through. You know, my dad was yeah, there for me when I, since I was small. When I, yeah, he raised me up and taught me how to work on the station and to hop on some, yeah, bull and that. As I was growing up. Yeah, alcohol and drugs don't mix, especially when it comes to bull riding. Yeah, don't do drugs and you won't get nowhere doing that. No good for us Aboriginal people, you know. I don't drink beer or smoke or cigarette. Yeah, just stay healthy and yeah, I love to be. Keep chasing my dream. Keep working hard, eh? Just keep trying to, like, how can I explain it? Like, be commitment to your own sport. Like, if you're really into that sport, like, be really into it. So, yeah. Girls love bull riders, and if you're a winner, oh, they come chasing you. He's on the big chestnut west pack, and oh, he puts him down. No luck there, Jace. Bad luck, cowboy. Oh, that's good. Oh, like, I'd rather, I'd rather ride a saddle bronc than bull. At least a saddle bronc, you know, you, you up there and then. You know you're not going to get horned or driven into the ground, you know, you get fucked off a horse, you go down. All depends whether if you don't get kicked or not, but that's only a kick, you know, a bull can do more damage. Yeah, the bull riders do look down on the bronc riders. The bronc riders, you know, they have to put more effort into, you know, to sit in the saddle, to spare that, do the sparing action. You know, on the bull, you got to lock in on him and, you know, give him a little bit of spare now and then, you know, and cut him. I just like to experience riding on the bronc, cause it's a good experience for me as a young fella. And yeah, um, I was growing up with my uncles. They was the old cattlemen. And I've been working with them, you know, getting experience of them to, to be a bronc rider. And Yeah, the Bronx are right, and their bareback is a, is they're sort of a little bit yeah, like a bull, yeah, and they're yeah, rough like a bull. Yeah, wanna go all the way, stick with my dream to be a bronc rider. Bull riding is a bit dangerous, and bronc riding is a bit, a bit high, you know. Oh, she's up! Oh, she's got some talent! Oh, she's gonna hang on all by herself! Oh, what an effort! Put your hands together, Tommy James! What a great ride! Oh, he's hanging on there. She's spinning there, boy! Oh, he's down! Oh, we'll have the ambulance men to the arena, please. Ambulance men! Oh, big round of applause for this man, come on! You know, the first thing's first, bull riding's pretty dangerous. Or well, whether it's calf riding or steer riding, it's all pretty it's all pretty hectic on your body. So uh, we'll start off with the safety gear. And um, I'd recommend all of to wear a helmet. You'll find most of the fellas <coughs> you know, wearing them now. I think the juniors, it's compulsory. This is made out of bulletproof material. This is a, a Phoenix vest. I used to ride with a Phoenix. Moving on to the gear that we're hanging on with. And of course, this is our rope and it's important to have a good bull rope. And the main thing with the rope is they gotta be, they gotta be well made here in this department. If this thing really rolls over too far, that's what happens when you get hung up, you know? You, you twist over, 
and you get hung up. When the boys pull it, you sort of, you wrap it in your hand, you got one come this way, and then one you put one to here, and you hold it, that's a suicide knot. So that's that. The other bit of gear we're hanging on with, of course, is our spurs. And uh, these are very important part of our gear. You know, you got to really use your feet riding bulls. You lose your, lose your feet, you lose your seat. OK, calls the left out. He's got a good one. Goes to work on him. Hangs back around. Here the side he goes. And back up. What an out of post. Great right there by Shane Anderson. There it is. Give him a big oh, round of applause. Hold it the way. He's got it, Bill. Got the control. He's out over him. He's sticking with him. Putting a little steel on him down the other end there. The welcome whistle goes, and there's a qualified ride. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, he got a lot of good bulls coming in. Yeah, we've seen bulls and eyes about that, and it was all good. Yeah, so it's going to be a challenge. I think I'm looking forward to win again, and hope we're good and get on a good bull and that, and yeah. Hope that, yeah, gonna make the eighth second again and to make it to the final. Yeah, it's this year. When I wonder bull riding here at Dumuji, yes, feel real proud of myself again and When the lights go down in Doomji, Sideshow Alley lights up, and all the competitors, it's like the calm before the storm. They decide to take their families along to enjoy some time with the kids, put them on some rides, and just have some fun. Because tomorrow, it's the finals, and it's full on action. Gets him marked out, the old caveman. Goes to kicking and jumping and kicking. Right. No wide and handsome in the finals. Looking for the cash here, Jake Duncan. Gets him marked out, he's got him started. The big rock's too rough and he's put him in the dirt there, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's a good Harry Walton Jr. on the big brown bomber. Way she goes down the 52 pickup. Walton's on top and in control. He looks like he's in the table. He calls outside, Jason Ned on Bloombuck. She goes to jump and a kick and Ned takes control. He looks like he's got it wrapped up to me. 
There's a lot of young bull riders here that you know want to keep going, and it's just that uh, with funding and that, um, it's pretty hard. But now that we get fellas like Troy Dunn, Darren Brandberg, Malcolm Gill, you know, um, they're willing to open the gate up for these young fellas, which is good, you know. Yeah, I've, I've got a lot of faith in them, you know, going a long way, but it's just a matter of getting them out there and, and um, getting, it, getting them, you know, exposed to the sport more. From my standpoint as, you know, as a president of the PBR, you know, promoting bull riding, it'd, you know, it'd be unbelievable. I have to, you know, select the World Cup side every year in which, you know, only five or six Australians go and to have, you know, an Indigenous bloke in that side, it'd be, be you know, an amazing thing. I want to be the best. So if, um, you know, if he wants to follow Troy Dunn, that would be a good opportunity for him and the rest of the young fellows that want to take up bull riding, you know. And it's a really big step. My dream is radio, eh? I want to make it to the PBR, that's my biggest goal, eh? Like, take the world champ buckle out and all that. So, yeah. My dream was to become a radio star. And I've always dreamed of being a bull rider since I was small. I want to go over overseas and compete against professionals and in the PBR, that'd be real good, you know, being on television and worldwide. Well, if they really want me to do it and I know that I'm good at it, I'll probably give it a go. Well, well I want to chase the yeah, dream in a long way, yeah. And if Trudan asked me to, yeah, to do, uh, asked me to go over to the States, yeah, to, I'll take the opportunity to go. My dream is to be, be an Australian champion in the future.
Put your hands together for him just the same. As I said, the Birmingham Dark Bulls raking a little havoc here this afternoon at Dunkey. All the way outside of the Hanson Rock. He's in the spot, but the big one pulls him down, ladies and gentlemen. And notice straight to come down off him. We'll just check Joseph out there and make sure he's all right. I think he connects his chin with that ball. straight in to check Joseph out, please. We'll have those ambulance guys straight in. He's taken a whack under the chin. Ball's outside now, Anderson on the gun deal. He's going back to the wall, that far. Anderson does stop. He may just sneak it. There goes the whistle. They've got him up. They're saying he was up. Put your hands together, boys! Take him there, I'll come down. The only man to have two scores and the official winner of the bull riding right here at Gullagy, let's hear it for him! Well done, Shane. All the way. Hold outside, Anderson on arachnophobia. Oh, well. Ladies and gentlemen, he started him up. Yeah, I want to be a, maybe Australian champion one day, and, you know, I want everyone, every Aboriginal to look up to me, you know, when I'm away, representing, the, representing Australia maybe one day. Follow your dreams. Keep your head up high. If you got a dream there, follow it. If you want to be a rodeo rider, mm. follow your dream because that's what I've done.